No, I guess that's me. <laughs> uh, my friend Fran uh, spent most of her life trying to end it. Uh, she was uh, hell bent on self destruction, drugs, alcohol, suicide attempts. And then she fell pregnant and she found she was going to have a little girl and she wanted to live forever. Um, she battled on losing bits of her for about three years. She was given three months to live. And she did a very brave battle, great pain for three years. So, um, but she gets the, the thing that she's going to uh, die. Uh, I wrote this poem called Adagio for her. She was listening to her music. Adagio. The music tiptoes through the room, careful not to wake the sleeping photographs of the dead. Their lives trapped behind glass amongst vast fields of wallpaper of violets. Stopping to caress the singular beauty of the rose dreaming in its chipped vase of the garden where it was born, curtains led by a breeze into their dance, gazing upon the green that unfurls about the house, the music wounded now by a tear that grown upon her cheek, note by note, a woman staring into space, a cat asleep upon her toes, the music retreating back into the mahogany cabinet curling itself into its circle, a whirlpool of sh black shellac, the music lost in the silence, only its breathing audible now in the runoff groove, the needle returning to its proper place with a click, the last light stealing across the lawn. Thank you. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> now we are mixed up every one of these. Uh, this is called I Am Amazon. Topless bader, one tanned breast, the other white scar. Unashamed of her solitary breast, I am Amazon, she proclaims. The next year, the other breast is lost, she bears her chest to all. Topless, breastless, she smiles at being alive. I offer myself to the sun, sans emblems of woman. I spit in the cancer's face, dressed in only bird song, caressed by the sun. Oh. Okay. Mm. Mm. This is called uh, the final word. After, oh yes, uh, the accident. The accident was no accident. She always referred to her cancer as the accident. Mm -hmm. Little accidents, it was run her over. She also called her cancer fucker, as in hey fucker, just you and me fucker. And, uh, so. Final word. After the accident, her rather forward sloping writing now leans back. The once firm hand now a spiderly crawl across the blue page. When you read this, I will be dead, letter from beyond the grave. The past and the present collapse into each other. The voice so alive, the letter shakes. Even though I'm gone, I just wanted to have the final word. Written in blue quink ink, teardrops dissolve her words. Her chair as if she had just left there. It's seeming as if she has just stepped out of the room. Everywhere she wasn't, there she was. I kept just missing her, blinded by tears. I stumble from room to room. I call her name. A bird answers. Rain taps on the pane. Thank you. <laughs> and I was listening to the piece of music that she was listening to after. She was gone. So this is called Listen to Your Favourite Piece of Music. Oh, you were so quiet, I hardly heard you tiptoe silently in, settle amongst the strings, talking to me, now in cello, now in violin, the heartbeat of a drum, the exchange of laughter between glockenspiel and xylophone, making a pint with either, the tiny tinkle of a triangle or the crash of a cymbal. I listen to you talk to me in music, the candlelight grows dim, and then, as softly as you can, you leave, leaves fluttering against the window pane. I feel you leave, leave before the movement ends, footsteps in the silence of my memory, me nearly forgetting that you've died, listening on until the end as the music cries. <coughs> It called the Children of Lyr. Yeah, Eats refers to it too. Whilst ones are cool, the trees are in their autumn beauty. Um, 
Children, of, is there anybody know the story? Do I have to give you some little thing of it? Hmm? You have to. Yeah, sure. All right. Children of Lair, um, it's the Cinderella story. Um, ugly ste a new stepmother comes in and she's a magicianess and she magics the kids into swans because she doesn't like them. They fly off and they fly from century to century to century to century down to Christian times. And Fanula, the last daughter, is left alone and she's got knit uh, garments of nettles for them. So she spends all the centuries painfully making garments of nettles for them. And then they come back and she has to go out and throw their garments over them and they'll turn back into themselves again. And she hasn't quite finished, so one of the brothers still has the swans. <laughs> Fairy tale. I sit by your bedside watching your dying. Only love nails me to this pain. I am unable to escape your dying. I tell you Irish legends and Hans Christian Andersen, as you become again, if only for a little while, the child you used to be, once upon a time, the wonder and the light were new as daylight. Tell me Lur, tell me the children of Lur. I tell of how they are turned into swans in the loneliness of eternity. I too knit nettles to break the spell, throw the garment over your cancered body, so you can return again to being the human I have known. This dying is cruel beyond belief, an insult to your life. I love you so much I would kill you if I could kill you, but I can't. I want every breath of you not to be your last. You journey to your death, dancing with your pain. My little mermaid, my little ballerina, I guard your dying, my constant tin soldier, as you become foam, foam on the sea. Just a day ago, sucking a sultana, I held on the tip of my fingertip telling me to call your name. I love living in your voice, so nice, so nice. And I, a blind prince, wandering now, lost in the fairy tale of your death, I close your eyes, kiss the last warmth of your lips. Thank you.